Hi, I'm Avian Parks and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the charming Flamingo Villa. It's a new property located at the peaceful Salmon Grove Housing Development. It's been an eventful week, so as we explore this wonderful property in the next half hour, we'll also bring you up to date with what's been happening on the island this past week. So stay with us as we bring you the details, starting with this week's headlines. Blackrock Primary School partners with First Citizens to create green space classroom. URP employees showcase their talent with artistic furniture and concrete designs. And later, Tobago tourism hits the road to maximize domestic market. All this and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Flamingo Villa was designed to be a high-quality, spacious, luxury holiday retreat. It's a great location to sit back and relax, and guests will love the quiet ambience of Salmon Grove. There's so much that can be achieved through cooperation and partnership. True progress and development hardly occurs single-handedly, but usually happens when individuals come together for a common cause. Let's see how a partnership between Blackrock Government Primary School and First Citizens will benefit students and teachers. Students and teachers of the Blackrock Primary School have some exciting times of learning ahead of them. Maximizing on the good weather and greenery that Tobago is blessed with, a partnership between the school and First Citizens Bank is set to transform learning at this institution. SCB approached the school, sir, and... Um they had a project apparently from their organization that they wanted to create green spaces in schools. I think this is one of three schools that they're doing um, green spaces in. So um, right away we, we grabbed that the idea because it was part of our school development plan. We were very happy to get a partnership with a corporate partnership and then we included the PTA to um, see if they could come and lend some manual labor. So we have always envisioned um, a little leisure area so that children who are inclined to do some leisure reading could sit in an attractive area, an area that will attract them so that they could do some leisure reading. Chief Secretary and Secretary of Education, Innovation and Energy, Kelvin Charles, applauds the Partnership in Education initiative, especially as it is a promotion and preservation of nature. One of our um, goals is to encourage um, partnership among various entities because we are saying that that is one of the ways in which we will get people empowered and get things done and get things done more quickly. So that I am particularly gratified that the um, First Citizens Bank would have been collaborating with the Black Rock Government School in respect of this um, outdoor project. It is a useful um, entity because you could have the students coming outside with their teachers and engaging in certain kinds of, whether it is reading activity, um, poetry, even in terms of just getting them to become attuned with the environment and develop their skills of listening, for example. So what can students and teachers expect from this new space that will complement their school compound? Here's what manager of the landscaping company responsible for undertaking the project has to say. What it is, um, is hoped to be achieved here is that you make a, you know, improve the aesthetics of the area, make an area that is in terms of the seating, that is comfortable for the teachers and for the students. You want to make it inviting. We want to be able to um, have an area that they can come out and relax and that the teachers can bring their classes during the day when they want to do some oral activity that might be a little bit disruptive on the inside, that they can come outside with the class. They have a nice area that they can relax in and do those oral work that might be disruptive within the building. What we have in terms of the design, we try to bring in a bit of um, flowers in terms of to be able to attract the butterflies like the lantanas and even the hummingbirds in terms of the Antigua heat, which you would see that will be flowing over the wall on one side. Um, other than that, we try to bring in um, some of the other areas that are in terms of tolerant to the sun. Um, so we have crotons that their leaves are very colorful 
Um, we have silver mangrove that will be great in creating a hedge. So, um, yeah, so those are the concepts that we try to bring in and try to make it put plans that will be safe for the students to be around. The property sits on 2,500 square feet of land and can comfortably accommodate 14 persons. It's ideal for group get-togethers such as family reunions. For the young and the young at heart, social media offers a world of selfies, networking and a never-ending supply of digital content. And as many Tobago students learned, it's also a platform full of opportunity. It's all in this next story. What goes on social media stays on social media. And especially for youth, social media mistakes can stay with you for a lifetime. In Tobago, young people are being encouraged to think positive and use social media platforms to create development opportunities. That's why the Division of Sport and Youth Affairs conducted a social media training workshop for youth and youth organizations. This program was birthed out of the need for responsible and proper social media management. Specifically, we try to get more at training the youths because that's our focus. So today we are trying to give as much information as possible. The main goal was to ensure participants can make the most of what they learned during the session. In order to ensure that the young persons who are in the session today are well equipped with the necessary information regarding um, engaging stakeholders on social media platforms, the Department of Youth has engaged one of the most influential social media consultants in Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Christopher Granger. Topics covered at the workshop included planning content, detailed designs, mission and vision statements, and strategic communication. Let's use the platforms for revenue generation. Let's use the platforms to build our personal brands, build our professional brands, and build businesses. The division is planning a more advanced social media session as a follow-up to the workshop. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk to Bigo. With its four ensuite bedrooms and separate powder room, the sleeping accommodations at Flamingo Villa are flexible for visiting groups. For your comfort, each room is air-conditioned and features quality furnishings. The THA one-on-one -on -one community meeting series most recently stopped in at Lambeau Village, and education was one of the major topics up for discussion when residents of Lambeau, Signal Hill, Patient Hill, and Environs met with THA representatives. We have the highlights in this report from Omodara Mills. Overcrowding and a lack of classroom space is a major concern for Signal Hill Government Primary School. It was one of the many issues raised at the one-on-one -on -one meeting for the Lambo Signal Hill District. They promised additional space. They brought two 20-foot containers, put it down there, put AC in it. It cannot adequately take the size of the class that they have at Signal Hill Government Primary. There were four schools, if you want to put it like that, where they have additional buildings. Yours is one. A whim is another. Yes, we have hope and so on Patience. because we are saying that we need to do that to expand the place. But we also have to work with policies because when we don't do that, we see the implications. Mr. Charles explains that one reason for overcrowding in schools is the breaches in the school placement policy. The policy states that those who reside in the catchment area must be given first preference. Additionally, the issue of getting more teachers and teacher placement are matters that the division is seeking to address with the Teaching Service Commission. Residents are also calling for better roads in their community, ones that are well paved and clearly marked. The road resurfacing program was three phases at $20 million each. Um, currently, the parliamentary allocation for road resurfacing in Tobago stands at um, $13 million. So we have a real challenge to stretch the little that we have. But what I can say is that I've asked the assemblymen to provide a list of priority streets so that we could plan a four-year cycle for road resurfacing. 
The Signal Hill Community Center is an important meeting space for community members, so residents are grateful for the refurbishment works done on the building. It has been years that I would have been at these said meetings complaining about our center at Signal Hill, and we are indeed thankful that our center is fixed, so I want to say thank you very much for that. Other matters discussed at this meeting are illegal dumping in certain areas, as well as the need for better customer service within the tourism sector, and for creating policies that ensure more sustainable development for the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but up next, URP employees show they've got talent. Stay with us. The interior of Flamingo Villa is impressive, with gypsum ceilings, porcelain tile floors, extensive recessed lighting, and vibrant Caribbean colors. It all adds to the feeling of tranquility and luxury you get once you step through the front door. The unemployment relief program is not just about short-term employment. It's also helping workers to develop skills that will enhance life after the program, including the talents displayed at the Blenheim Concrete Workshop. Take a look. Karen Jack is a senior joiner at the Unemployment Relief Program's furniture unit. Here, he's cutting wood to build cupboard doors. He began working at the URP's furniture shop as a trade assistant in June 2001. Now, Karen is proud of the skills he's acquired over the years, being able to turn a piece of wood into furniture for homes, schools, or office spaces. I built some beds, and when I was finished, I couldn't believe that I built those beds. I built some dining chairs, and I was shocked. I was shocked myself. It's taken a piece of material and turn it into a work of art. You know, and you have to have a love for it. You have to have a feeling for it. And that is the difference with us here. You know, we come from nothing and make something. And that is the beauty about it here. The furniture unit at Shore Park is under the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment. Training facilitator Dave Stewart says it began as an avenue for youth development and to increase the number of skilled tradespeople on the island. Young people on the outside who now live in school also can come and further their career. If they started in high school, they could come here and further it and get a certificate, or you could even come into the workshop according to how they qualify. In this field, is a field where you could help yourself. It's a very expensive field, but you have to know what you're doing because your parts involve fingers, it's very sharp tools and things you deal around, so you have to know what you are doing. Also within the URP is the Blenheim Concrete Products Plant. Workers create and sell concrete flower pots, fence posts, table sets, footpaths, park benches and fountains. It started as a training program and from the training program you develop a skill and with that skill you could take it up to open your own business, own concrete product business. Both units supply products to various divisions, businesses and schools. Furniture and concrete products are also sold to the public by order. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Salmon Grove ensures guests can have a quiet night by keeping the noise to a minimum after 10 p.m. But if you're hoping to experience the local nightlife, you're just a short drive away from the action at Crown Point. Now this. The island's leading technical and vocational training institution, WITEP, recently held its graduation ceremony themed, Graduation is a Journey, Not a Destination. Take a look. Graduation is a Journey, Not a Destination. That was the theme of the graduation ceremony for WITEP, the Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program. 191 graduates crossed the stage to receive their certificates signifying the successful completion of their various programs. Valedictorian Regine Daniel praised the graduating class for making the choice to persevere through difficult times. At times, the shortcomings really took a toll on us, and negativity raised its ugly head to whisper doubts in our ears, but we never allowed each other to give up. We understood that our failures were not final. A former teacher himself, Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles, congratulated the graduates on their achievements. Let me say to you, the graduates, 
Congratulations to all of you. You have already begun the process. I encourage you to ensure that you use your new skills and expertise to build the Tobago you would like to see. The graduates were also told that the ceremony was an important step in their development. This occasion is no doubt a very significant one for you as you continue on your journey towards growth and development. You all have demonstrated your success through not only your knowledge and skills, but more importantly, your will to complete your training to the end. The graduating class consisted of both youth trainees and retrainees from 14 different occupational areas within the program. I'm Kieran DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. At Flamingo Villas, the outdoors are just as inviting as the indoors. It's amply furnished and includes a dining area, plus a large gas grill for those who want to fire up some barbecue. Forging to make Tobago a better place, the police service is calling on the public to partner with them. Here's more in this story. The law enforcement officers are reminding communities that the police are most effective in the fight against crime when they are assisted by the residents. That's the message senior officers left with Speyside residents recently. It's the latest stop in the ongoing community meeting series being hosted throughout the country. It's part of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Services effort to build closer ties with the national public. I want to let you know it's a privilege for us being in Speyside this evening. And we are here to listen to all concerns. We are here for you to tell us what we are doing good, what we are doing not so good, and what we are doing bad. This is the opportunity for you all to reach with the executive of the Tobago Division. Because we are not on the street day to day. We are in our offices. So this is the opportune time for you, for you to address us. Policing requires partnership. It's usually the input of the general public that makes the difference. And this is what we are talking about. Working with the public to ensure that the quality of your life is, is, is enhanced, that you are comfortable, and certainly crime will be kept at its minimum. So we want you to see us as a part, as partners in the fight against crime, and not just what the police say goes. The residents praise the policing in their community, and they also raised a few concerns. Most of the times I do visiting during the night. And my concern is sometimes I pass from the Charlottesville district and go all the way down. I have schools all to Mariah and Harmons. And sometimes, you know, sometimes in the night, especially late in the night, that's, it's something to be scary to be driving alone, especially in these nights. And you're, you know, actually not seeing a for these presents, you know, like sometimes in the night and these sort of things. My concern is that if, you know, there could be a little bit more police patrol, you know, around the north side road, especially the late hours in the night. A couple nights, they are there on the road, but most of the times, I'm driving alone. So my concern is if we can have a little bit more police patrol on the north side road. Mr. Campbell, you, you asked for more patrols, and we will convey that to the sergeant at Charlottesville. And feel free to call us and tell us if you have seen more patrols. I have a concern about the young men, because you are seeing very few young men coming out to police club meetings or any other organization. And I have a concern about that because most of the crimes you see committed uh, with our, are being done by our young men. So I am wondering if the police can, you know, probably implement some program. 
similar to the police club specifically for our young men in the communities and stuff like that. So I would really hope that some more effort could be placed on, you know, our young men in the communities. What you're suggesting is a, a robust recruitment drive for the young people and I'm, I'm sure the ASP in charge of community policing, he has heard you and we will certainly discuss uh, moving forward with all the youth clubs on the island. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time for a break, but when we return, we'll tell you about the do's and don'ts of turtle nesting season. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. There's enough reason to stay in and cool down poolside or entertain friends on the deck. Your privacy is also assured as the pool area is shielded by high front and side walls plus a privacy screen. Turtle watching is a favorite activity for nature lovers, but sometimes over-enthusiastic members of the public can affect the nesting of the turtles. In this next story from Omodara Mills, we've got a few tips to minimize the impact on gentle creatures. Here's the story. Trinidad and Tobago is the second largest colony of sea turtle conservation globally. And every year from March to September, female turtles come up to lay their eggs on beaches like this one, Turtle Beach. Species like the loggerhead, hawksbill, green turtle, olive ridley, and the giant leatherback nest on many other beaches around the island. They are slow-growing marine animals, but the game wardens say they play an important role in our environment. And being marine animals, they help to control like sponges on the reefs and whatever. Although some eat jellyfishes and some eat um, small fish like sprats and these things, right? It, it generates a lot of revenue to like tour guides, nature seekers and so forth, you know. It spins off a good revenue to people in Trinidad and Tobago. Sea turtles are considered to be an environmentally sensitive species under the Environmental Management Act. In an effort to protect them, the game wardens have outlined some key tips, including don't disturb a sea turtle, don't shine bright lights in its face, don't sit or ride on a turtle, don't leave your garbage on the beach, and don't pick up hatchlings to take home. There's also a list of things you can do to aid in conservation efforts. If you see a turtle in distress, do see if you're going to assist or call a department. Um, for we'll provide assistance as well. Uh, remove your garbage when you're leaving the beach. Uh, be mindful of your light on your lighting position on the beach, and also be mindful of the, the volunteers or the groups that is on the beach. And don't give them as much trouble as possible because the crowd can be unruly at times. Like the police, game wardens can arrest persons found in breach of the law. Last year, at least three people faced the courts for offences against turtles. The definition for hunting is pursuing, trapping, molesting. So riding on the back is molesting, so that's hunting you can be charged. right for. The fee for basically um, against sea turtle right now it stands at $100,000 TT and two years imprisonment. The Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries collaborates with NGOs such as the Turtle Village Trust and Environment Tobago to collect data and preserve turtles. The conservation efforts reduce the human dangers turtle face so that future generations can enjoy these marine animals. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Flamingo Villa may very well entice you to stay indoors. But if you're looking to explore the island, it's the perfect starting point for a trip from virtually every direction. And speaking of tourism, the island is seeking to maximize the local market as a contingent of hoteliers and other tourism stakeholders visited the sister isle for a very special roadshow that we'll show you in this next story. This is 
just a snippet from the showcase of local entertainment that formed a part of the Back to Tobago Time promotional roadshow in Trinidad. It's an initiative targeting visitors from the sister island, geared at increasing domestic tourist arrivals to Tobago. This is now convenient for you to return to Tobago. So the theme for our event to encourage you to get back is back to Tobago. Back to Tobago for romance. Back to Tobago for soft adventure. Back to Tobago to witness culture. Back to Tobago for rest and relaxation. And fortunately for you, it's the only place that you can visit and come with your own vehicle because the ferry is functional. You can come with your family. Tobago tourism stakeholders use the trade show reception to drum up new business among industry partners in Trinidad with special holiday packages. I'm enthralled about this whole exercise this evening here. Um, I thought it was well organized. It, it went straight to the heart of what the the Tobago uh, hoteliers and uh, other business people in Tobago would want to project to the Trinidad um, uh, market. I am really quite pleased with the presentation. We will like to partner with the hoteliers really to put together some packages and really try to keep tourism right here in our Twin Island Republic. The roadshow was not only about gaining new business. It also highlighted the best aspects of Destination Tobago's growing tourism industry, one that others can follow. It's important for us to understand and learn from the model that's being used in Tobago so that we can use models and take it back to San Grande to see how, how best we can build our local economy. And we are going to bring this, a session like this in San Grande, to educate the people very soon. And I can tell you, you'll have an influx of the people of the Northeast region. At the Gulf City Mall and C3 Center, Tobago industry stakeholders felt at home. Since most of the patrons had lasting experiences of their visits to destination Tobago. I go to Tobago to rejuvenate and to get back to work. It's great and I'm going to be back to Tobago next month and going forward all the time. I just love Tobago. What I love especially about Tobago is the hospitality of the people. Don't talk about all your food. Getting around the island is easy. People are willing to help reach out and, and give you a hand. The three-day promotional roadshow in Trinidad sends a clear signal that Destination Tobago is open to welcome new and returning visitors from the domestic market. It's time to have your say. It's the segment of the program where we hear from you, the viewers. Let's take a look at who had their say this week. All right, so we're here with Miss Jordan right now. So we're here with Bruce right now. So we're here with Brent right now. Are we asking Mr. Phillip? Are we asking who's Winchester? I can't talk for it. I'm telling you that. You're going to have some camera away. Why do you think it's important to protect the letter back to it? You may go on. Now all the turtle, you may go on with turtle. Eh? They have a time when you could get the total and they have a time you cannot get the total and you shouldn't get the total. The total you want to breed. Because they help the ecosystem, so turtles feed off a small fish and it encourages them to grow. And also you have ecotourism where you can have people come into the country just to see the turtles and market the turtles as a form of tourism as well. Because they are an endangered species and we have a right to protect them. It's the best thing to do. The best thing to do. That um, in later years, generations will come to witness and see it. God put everything in its place and we should take care of them. Like how God take care of us. Because the leatherback turtles is part of our environment and mm -hmm. imagine the leatherback turtles, you could affect tourism because tourists still come to see the leatherback turtles. Putting things in place to protect the rubber, rubber, uh, leather, leatherback turtles mm -hmm. and people dying all over Trinidad. Put things in place to prevent people from dying. They're more important than leatherback turtles. They're very important. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing people killing them. And they're supposed to take care of them. Okay? So tell them, I say not to kill them. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
From our house to yours, I'm Avian Parks, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week.